over the time tonight as we fall back. That's right. I get an extra hour to be scary. Ooh. I'll stop now. Good thing we fall back tonight because he's making me fall forward right now. Yeah. And unfortunately, ooh, Kitty's there too. Unfortunately, we have a guest in the studio who thinks, who is this weird guy? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 trust me, I think Samantha Harris has seen much weirder than this. Yes. <laughs> Since she is oh, with the... I, I hope she would say that she's seen weirder than me. <laughs> she is with the Michigan Paranormal Research Association. We're going to be talking with her. She's a student at Michigan State University, a graduate of Dexter High School, back here in Ann Arbor today to talk about some weird goings on and not just what Dean's doing back there. <laughs> I'm Lucy Ann. Welcome to the Lucy Ann Lance Show here on Business Talk 1290 WLBY. We've got a great show for you today. Not only are you going to hear the devil speak, but also uh, our pet of the week from the Humane Society of Huron Valley. Who's our little critter today, Dean? We have a dog. A dog coming in. All right. Good. Yes. Mm-hmm. And that's coming up yeah. shortly. Also, Mary Morgan, publisher of AnnArborChronicle.com. She's going to talk about the future of the Ann Arbor Senior Center. Also, the future of Washtenaw County Extension, getting a reprieve this week. Wahoo. Woohoo, yeah. Oh. Uh, they do the Master, Master Gardener Gardeners program. Master Gardeners and a lot of things for the kids. Agriculture. And, yeah, they have the big fair at the end of right. uh, uh, at the end of July, I mm-hmm. think, over at the Farm Council Grounds, right. 4 Fair. Lots of fun mm-hmm. they have, so uh, they are breathing a sigh of relief over at County Extension. And what is Library Lane? What does it have to do with our Ann Arbor District Library? We're going to find out. Mary will tell us. Also, is there going to be a millage request for our bus service, AATA? And we'll also touch on elections with Mary. And Eve Silberman will talk about the elections. She wrote about them in this uh, upcoming month's Ann Arbor Observer. You should have gotten that in your mail this past week. There's a new trend in food manufacturing. Tina Miller, our registered dietitian, will tell us what that is. We're going to explore Michigan wineries with Dave Lorenz from Travel Michigan. And our hero of the week is a seventh grader. Elizabeth Young will be live in studio and she is just tremendous, Dean. She has done so much to help out Hope Clinic. And you know how she started this when she was just a tot? She told her parents she didn't want any birthday gifts. She wanted people to make donations to Hope Clinic. Oh, wow. Isn't that yeah, just remarkable? Great. As a little kid, yeah, I know exactly. <laughs> hard to do that as an adult. So mm-hmm. we're saluting Elizabeth Young today, and she'll be live in studio in our 10 o'clock hour. Also, this is the Day of the Dead, El Dia de las Muertes, and we'll be talking with Professor Alfonso Ingleworth Rico. He's out of Eastern Michigan University's Department of World Languages. He'll tell us what this means uh, to those in Mexico. Did you have to practice that? No, I just uh, pretended. I could say it. Wow. <laughs> you know, they always say if you if you say it with enough confidence. Right. And very quickly. Yeah. <laughs> you remember Gorbachev. <laughs> no, the one you have a Oh yeah, Gorbachev. Yeah. No, what's, I cannot say Amenabadaba Daba Daba. What? Yabba dabba do? <laughs> Come what? on. You do that one. I'm, a did, uh... I, I'm the one who has to say it. Go ahead. Whenever we have a news story. Yes. Amadinejad. Thank you. Yes. Beautiful. <laughs> 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 Stephanie Murray, the community. That's why I got the job, Samantha. <laughs> Stephanie it's Murray, great. the community director of uh, Ann Arbor.com, will be by with some neighborhood news. You may have noticed on Ann Arbor.com they've got a new feature, an events calendar that you can log into right on their front page. And Dan Riddle from Lodi Farms, we uh, get growing with him. He's going to tell us about some spooky plants today that you might want to have in your yard for a little, uh, well, a little definition, maybe a little scare too. And then finally, we close out the show with a live performance of the Celine Fiddlers. They're getting ready for their hometown concert next weekend, and we get them first right here on 1290. WLBY. Quick break. We're back with more Samantha Harris. She knows where the ghosts and goblins are. She's going to tell us more. She's with the Michigan Paranormal Research Association. Our conversation coming up next. A few surprises, too, during that on 1290 WLBY. I 
this sounds like we're going to go into the Halloween rap here. <laughs> the creepy and the kooky. Mysterious and spooky. <laughs> Word. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like the Adams yeah, family. Yeah, well, yeah, that's the only thing I could think of right now. Uh, the show brought to you in part by Merkel Furniture and Carpet One. When it really matters, choose Merkel, choose local. In Chelsea, in Ann Arbor, next to Trader Joe's, and also online at MerkelCarpetOne.com. Halloween show, October 31st. And here again is Lucy Ann Lance. Thank you, Mr. Erskine. Ooh. And Samantha Harris is live in studio with us, where she is a senior at Michigan State University and the director of the Michigan Paranormal Research Association. You were two years old. Yep, when I started having some weird paranormal stuff, I guess. And uh, my mom and I actually were um, <clears throat> going through some home videos, probably embarrassing myself in front of my boyfriend. And uh, <laughs> we happened to see a clip, and I guessed my, I think it was Christmas present, right? And all of a sudden, I'm psychic. So it was pretty bizarre because usually, you know, kids at that age don't use that term. You, know, you guessed your gift? I did. And you I said, did. I'm psychic. Yeah, which is actually really weird. You know, hearing Two years kids. old. Yep, yep. <laughs> so I don't know. <laughs> I can't explain that. And since then, you've started this Michigan Paranormal Research Association. What what is its goal? What's the mission of it? Um, well, you know, there's a bunch of you know paranormal groups out these days, but uh, we've always we've always prided ourselves on actually you know considering the client and, and helping them out because you know it's really hard and stressful to experience these things alone. You know, let alone you know coming out and talking about it because a lot of people don't want to be um, you know termed crazy, entitled that. Um, so basically what we try to do is we'll come in, you know, on, listen to the client, you know, make sure that they know we're understanding, you know, and of course, you know, make sure that it's not like external factors like, you know, carbon monoxide poisoning and stuff, <laughs> but, um, but basically to help them out. And unlike a lot of other paranormal groups, we actually offer solutions. We do uh, house cl- uh, cleansings and blessings and stuff. I actually use like a uh, Native American um, ritual. And I also incorporate like Christian Catholic stuff too. So, so in, on your website, which is michiganpra.com, michiganpra.com, it says genuine and sincere. We document and resolve. I know. Is that cheesy or no? <laughs> no. So what are you documenting? <clears throat> um, well, basically with investigations, we try to gather evidence, you know, like all the other groups, too. Um but with documenting stuff, too, a, lo- a lot of people actually just want us to come in and do an investigation and a cleansing also. But, you know, in case they don't want us to do an investigation, we'll just come in and help them out. You know, we're trying to be respectful of their these privacy. Are, these are people who say there's something not right here. There's a ghost. There's a whatever. Yep, exactly. We'll get emails usually or sometimes even phone calls from families being like, you know, my children are being disturbed at night. You know, some, something's like, you know, touch their shoulder or having sleep issues. And a lot of things people don't even realize, too, is um, spirits can cause uh, symptoms such as like migraines, headaches, stuff nausea, sleep, you know, uh, disorders and insomnia and stuff like that because, uh, you know, according to theory that they require energy to function and somehow they draw that you know, from us, I guess. So it can be draining, you know, and, and cause physical side effects for us. And so when you document, does that mean that you have it on videotape? I would say so. We also have audio clips that I think we'll be sharing with you guys. Um, and, and a lot of people are skeptical, which is completely fine, too. But um, I usually ask people to, you know, approach it with an open mind. And then after we show you the stuff, if you don't, you know, believe that's completely fine. What too. video do you have? Um, well, we have a couple of video clips. I don't know if you guys are going to share with the online part of it. Um, but we have a clip of a light anomaly. It's also known as orbs, I guess. And, a light um, anomaly. I know. Doesn't that sound fancy? <laughs> um, but basically, people believe it is a spirit manifesting itself, I guess you could say. And it, it just looks like a ball of light in it. Um, this video we have from the Holly Hotel, which is believed to be one of the most haunted places in the nation, um, in Holly, Michigan. Great place. Um, Chrissy, the owner, it was great to work with uh, both times we've been there. And basically, it's shooting up from the floor. It has a flight path of its own. It actually pulses with light or energy and, and dodges some guy's face and shoots into the wall. And it's definitely not dust. How do you know that they're not making it happen so they get um, great marketing over at the Holly Hotel? Like Holly? Well, you know, before this whole like paranormal hype started, uh, the Holly Hotel has been priding itself on its spirits and ghosts for God, I don't even know how long. And they've been open for like the late uh, 1800s, I believe. So <clears throat> ever since the two really significant fires that happened, um, same same month, um, same day, within the same hour, and both fires were like inexplicably started. Like they started on their own um, without any explanations, and um, and b- they believe that there's a bunch of ghosts there too. So I don't know. So they've always been like involved with that. And um, although you know our our paranormal group doesn't necessarily condone seances, but they do offer that you know during the Halloween. Let's season. take a listen to 